Hello, everybody, and welcome back to WCS Korea Season 2. This is the Star League. I am Artosis next to Caldor, and we are in the round of eight. We have one player already going through to yep. the round of four, and that is Maru. Maru just advanced with a 3-1 over his opponent, similar. So we have one Terran already in the semifinal, and he is going up either against Innovation or Soul Key. How sick would it be if we had four Terrans in the top four? Then I think David would get a lot of fan mail. Wow. <laughs> no matter what results he generally does. But yeah, I, I, I bet so. you I bet you this, it's going to be two of one race and one of each of the other. Because normally it actually is. We normally have like the sickest balance top fours. So you predict Solky to win it? Uh, no, I don't actually. But he has to win it if it's... Well, I guess that's race. why I'm probably going to be right about all four, all three races being up there. Because I think Innovation is going to win. Right? Uh, okay. Right? See what he did there. Yeah. Well, here we have Solki, Innovation's opponent. He's, of course, currently with 3,600 DCS points set up quite well. Round of 16 performance was not against Terran so far. Also didn't play against a single Terran in uh, the round of 32. There was yeah. a potential match against Flash, but that didn't happen. Yeah, he had, uh, you know, the, the Terran matches, he did them all in the previous seasons. He didn't yeah. need that. Uh, we, he waited. Gonna take out Innovation now, possibly. What do you think? Who wins that? You have to give me a, a straight answer. Innovation takes it. Innovation? Yeah. What's the score? Uh, innovation takes it with the uh, same so the score that we just saw now, 3-1. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Go. Which score? Uh, innovation takes it. And it's going to be a 3-2. Okay. This is definitely going to be a really good game, and I am. The, the thing that blows me away is if you look at innovation score in general, especially in a matchup like against Zerg, it's unbelievable how consistent this player is and mm -hmm. how strong. So that's something that is really impressing me quite a lot. All right, so. Keller, take a look. Now, of course, guys, these stats are made by the Korean journalists. They were all polled, and we kind of put their numbers together. So it's it's just their opinions on yeah. them. Caldor, I want you to pick out one number there that you think is blatantly wrong and tell me why. Um, I would think that... Let me look at this. You have looked at those a lot more often than I did. Um, like the change or the number itself? No, the number itself. The actual round of eight number that we have for him. Which one is wrong? I think that that popularity number is pretty famous. Oh, okay. So you think he's more popular over here or less popular? In general, like in the community itself, I think that Solki is a lot less popular because he's one of those players who is very, very good and everyone knows okay. it, but he do is not really a flashy player. Like that's he's not, fair. No, he's like no MC, no MVP mm -hmm. where the community stands behind it. Innovation, on the other hand, has just that hype around him because he's just so good. Yeah. But Solki is a player who everyone knows, okay, that guy's really, really good, but I don't feel he's a name that foreigners will immediately like name if you talk with them about Starcraft. That is that is fair, but to be fair also, I I think the Korean journalist based upon the Korean popularity. Well, I cannot talk for the Korean. Yes, indeed. So. It's a little bit harder for that. Uh, but anyways, we do have innovation. As you said, you know, I think he is probably a more popular player overall. Oh, yeah. He's just everyone's like, well, this guy's unbeatable. If anyone beats him, he must be in balance. Uh, now let's take a look at these scores. Do you see any here? Well, you know, Can you pick out a negative here? <laughs> just just to give you an example, like Solki is at an 89 popularity and uh, innovation at 90. Uh, that is not really, you know, like okay. if you base it against each other. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, I think in uh, strategy, innovation should be a lot higher than 84. Okay, okay. I think that these numbers are and pretty good, though. 94 in offense. Also, Whoa. 92 I feel macro. That innovation's cheeses are better than 73. You know, the cheese number is what Tasteless and I have had the hardest problem decoding. Like, is this how good his cheeses are when he cheeses? Is it, you know, what what exactly? Like, how often he wins when he cheeses? Like, uh, Yeah, I think it's how successful you are when you execute a, a cheese strategy. And I think that innovation deserves a little bit more credit than just a Mia 73. Which more than a 73. Are we, opinion, are we looking more like a 77, a 78? I would say more like an 80. An 80. You know how they actually do those statistics? They don't use the entire 100 range. They use everything from like, have you ever seen something below 70 here? Yes, yes. Uh, in the Maybe. early rounds, some okay. of the like lesser name players had stuff in the 60s. Yeah, but that's in the first round, right? Yeah, yeah, so pretty much. So they basically only use like the top 30 for these rounds and then mm. putting innovation all the way at the bottom. I feel that's not really huh. adequate. Especially when you rate everything else way above 80. 
So that's why I would say that the, that uh, cheese factor is probably. I think he's a lot more successful than that when he are, when he cheeses. It's kind of interesting that uh, you know he's generally considered the best Terran in the world, and then the best Zerg would be considered Sulky, but his numbers were a lot higher than Sulky. Yeah. So just kind of an interesting little thing to point out there. Look at that win ratio just in general. I mean, this only reflects the WCS wins that Innovation and Sulky had, but Innovation uh, he just doesn't lose. Same could be said from Sulky. Both of them are great at this matchup. Yeah, and look at the players that they both lost to. Innovation lost to Sulky. Sulky and Symbol, duh, like the two best Zergs, basically, yeah. and, or Innovation lost those. Sulky lost to uh, Flash and Tasia, like, just, I mean, complete badasses all around. Yeah, these players are just great in this matchup, and the graph is actually, like, really interesting. You see both of them have very similar win percentages going through a matchup, especially, like, at the end, and the graph is, like, basically mirroring each other. It's just Innovation in general a little bit more successful yeah. as opponent. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, we can see right where that Roach Bane timing is for Soul Key, right in the middle of 9 to 15. <laughs> but, yeah, but look at this. Like, up to the 9 minute mark, we have Innovation being like more successful than the Soul Key. And where would you put Cheese in there? Below 9 minutes. Of course, it also includes a couple of timings that you have. Ooh, yeah. But still, true. like, there is it right in front of you. So that's, that's why true. I think that that Cheese factor is like a little bit like off. All right. I think I think you actually just proved the uh, Korean commentators that they have, or not the Korean commentators, the Korean uh, journalists, that they have opinions that are in fact wrong. All right. So, I guess now it's time to talk about the match yeah. because we're gonna wait for that to get started pretty quickly here. The first map, uh, Newkirk Precinct. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Uh, Newkirk, I mean, we saw it in the game between uh, Maro and Symbol already, so uh, I don't think this is really all too indicative, but I feel in general uh, the maps that I've seen Soul Key beat Innovation most of were rather big maps where he can really execute um, a lot of macro games where he can use his mobility to just force the Terran play into submission. So I feel this map in particular is pretty straightforward and I would give Innovation an edge over Soul Key. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty straight pushing yeah. uh, distance and you know, I think one of the more important parts are like when innovation starts to really macro his marine medevac mine marauder, the yep. mmm build, uh, and starts to really rally those across the map. I, when I've seen Sulky actually do well against him, a lot of time it's very counter attack focused. Yep. And is he going to be able to actually get in and counter attack properly on this map? Well, we're having a quick look at the maps just in general. As mentioned before already, we are going to start off with Newkirk today and then we're heading into Star Station and Bongali Beach. Whirlwind and Kill on Waste if we need the last two maps. We're going to close the series. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty good uh, set of maps right there to play this out on. I, I'm really happy we get to go to Guangli Beach again. It's one of my favorites. It's uh, so nice. really reminds me of all the fun times down in Busan that we've had. You like the map? Well, I like it because it's like it's an actual beach I've been to. It's like really cool. Oh, no, no. I, I really like I, I like that <laughs> the attention to detail, and I think it's yeah. fun. I yeah. just think for like the tournament itself, I would have liked a map with a little bit less fluff. I see what you mean, but what do you think of it balance-wise? Do we actually have stats on it balance-wise? Mm, I don't actually yeah. know how it's balance-wise. It I just think they toyed a little bit around with it too more. But as a map in general, like actually like just copying the actual location, that's yeah. pretty awesome. I, like I, I really do like that. They could make a map called like Soul, but it would be it would be a Protoss map with all the little streets that you can force field. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just be so. like a grid. The Protoss army just walks through like L O L. What is sounds this? Sounds like a great map for a Zerg player. <laughs> yeah, they'd like that a lot. Well, uh, sounds like the, my nightmare has come true. Mm -hmm. Do you dream about StarCraft much? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, especially when you like cast like really late and then you go to bed sure. and uh, the game is still unfolding in your head. So I have uh, StarCraft nightmares every now and then. Whenever I have a dream of playing, it's always a nightmare. Like you know how sometimes uh, you'll have a dream where you're like punching someone but it's not hurting them. No. Yeah, because I'm Caldor. <laughs> that would never happen. Um, but no, people have had that dream. But I sometimes have a dream where I'm playing StarCraft, but I can't macro. I have like 3,000 minerals. Like, I just can't get rid of it. I'm like supply blocked all the time. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's I don't have too many nightmares anymore. Like the one nightmare that I had for quite a long time when I was a kid was this falling nightmare. Then I started to ride my first roller coasters, and I really liked the feeling. So after that, I had the nightmare only once, and I enjoyed it like so much and never had it again. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of sad, too. That, that means you don't have good dreams, either, because you no, start no, no. to enjoy it and it goes away. No, you have no, very no, no, no. mediocre I just, dreams, I defeated Caldor. the nightmare. Like, it you was, defeated it? Was it? Fun. Like, it, 
I would have enjoyed to have that nightmare a little bit more often after that. It was I just fun. The falling in general. It's I like can a, see like, like a skydive. Kid's story. Caldor goes inside his ah. own dreams. He's got like a sword and a helmet on in the dream, trying to fight off the bad nightmare. <laughs> Not quite. No. But a good picture. <laughs> if you ever have to go into writing kids' books, use that one. All right, so we're still waiting for them to start. Looks like they are ready. Yeah, of course, Soul Key's asking Innovation to go easy on him. We'll see if that happens. The usual, what we have like every yeah. single time. Two Same old stuff that face yeah. each other. Like, please go easy on me. Yeah. And the other one is like, oh, yeah, ha, ha, ha you too, me. Oh. <laughs> Right. Well, guys, so we have another Zerg versus Terran coming up, and of course, we already talked a little bit about the series between Maru and Symbol earlier, but this is like the game that a lot of people were waiting for. We have Casper versus Casper, and they faced each other so many times already. The last time, Soul Key actually got the better of innovation, if I'm not mistaken. I think he defeated him with a 4 2. Uh, four three actually. Yeah, four three. So now we are heading into that series. They've known each other for a long time. Both of them with a smile on their face, very confident going into map number one. Let's see who's gonna take it. Uh, all right, here we go, man. The countdown has begun. I am super excited for this match, as I'm sure everyone out there is. Sulky and Innovation, possibly the two best players in the whole world, hitting in the round of eight. Kind of ridiculous, but I'm happy I get to cast it. Yeah. That is going to be a really, really sick game. Innovation versus Soul Key. Once again, we end the game. WCS Premier League. Game number one in the best of five between Soul Key and Innovation. Here at Gom TV. All right, down here in the bottom right of Newkirk Precinct, the best circuit in the world. Can he beat the best tear in the world? He is. Grandmaster, Wung Jin Star Soul Key. And you know what? After saying that, Kelder, I actually have to steal this next intro because I have the greatest intro for him. Ready? Go. Down here in the bottom left of Newkirk Precinct, the best Terran in the world. Can you defeat the best Zerg in the world? He is... Grandmaster. STX like Soul that? Innovation. Beautiful. That was good, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really excited for the builds right now. I want to see what exactly Innovation is doing, mm. like how greedy he's going to play this. We see a lot of commands in the first on the high ground, but this is just setting the pace for the entire series, I feel. If you want to get into an opponent's head, game number one is where it all begins. It is the place, isn't it? We actually saw that in the finals that these two played each other in, where Innovation rushed Sulky. I think it was Star Station was that first map, mm. and uh, just killed him so quick, and Sulky went on a downward spiral in 03. Took him a while to recover. Well, and there you have it on screen right now, the battles that they already fought in the past. Now all three that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And here comes the scouting. Uh, the first thing that Solki does is just he sends out a drone. And this just shows that he knows exactly that Innovation is a player who mixes up his style quite a bit and is really uh, sometimes just getting out those proxies and trying to take an early lead in the series. So really well done here by, uh, by Solki to get a bit of safety before he throws down chats first. Mm -hmm. It's an important thing to do. Uh, you don't want to just lose that first game to a proxy. And you've seen that Innovation will do that in the past. Now. He's going to drone scout the whole way, so he's going to see that it's a very quick command center. And we'll have to see how he wants to actually go against that. It could be by getting a quick speed that's not as common. Someone like Life might end up doing that. I feel like he'll probably just drone a little bit heavier. Yeah. Life sometimes actually doesn't uh, also delay his speed a little bit, and he just goes into additional Zerg links at mm -hmm. the beginning just to pressure. So that's really something that is very, very cinematic for Life's play. But I completely agree with you. I think that Soul Key is most likely just going to play this a little bit more economy based. But with that build in particular that we see coming out here from Innovation, he's going to be super safe at the beginning, but still has this very early command center. Yeah. So he is getting his fast gas as well. He'll be going right into a factory ASAP. These SCVs staying on the inside, not letting him uh, really attack them at all. You know, I was actually watching the drone a bit, and Sulky's going back and selecting it every few seconds just to see if an SCV has popped out to attack, but it doesn't happen, so he's going to send it home. One of the things that is really, really impressive about Innovation is that even though he played a lot of matches against Zerg, he still has such a crazy, crazy win ratio. We have him with nearly 50 maps played, and he still has a 78% win ratio mm. in this matchup. This just makes him one of the best Terran vs. Zerg players that we have in the entire world, if not the best. I would I would say he's the best. I'm trying to think if the... No, there's not no really one that right. I'm as impressed with. Like, no. I'm impressed with a few other players as well, but not to the level of innovation where I'm like, well, the matchup's imbalanced, you know, and... <laughs> Innovation just wins it all the time. It's kind of silly, actually. You know, Solkin, on the other hand, he's one of the few Zerg players that is really able to beat Innovation kind of on a regular basis. So it, maybe he's Innovation's kryptonite, and uh, we'll be. find out today because we have another best of five between the two of them. 
And of course, at the beginning here, just both of them testing the waters a little bit. A safe play from innovation with the bunker at the yeah. front. And again, like Maru played fantastically today. He really did. Oh, yeah. uh, best play I've ever seen from him by far. He took out Symbol, an amazingly good Zerg. But both these players have to be looking at that and saying, he is not as good as us. <laughs> and whether he is or not is a different story, but this is a very important match. Also, the game that we saw to her. There we go. Two oh Zerg my links. god. Oh my god, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> One lucky Marine right there. Yeah, certainly. A few extra queens for Soul Key, so he goes into four queens that will help him with the creep spread quite a lot, and he can hit those, those injects. He's just now getting the gas. Yeah, I do like the four queen opener. You know, it's kind of a, a more powering opener against Innovation, who has gone command center first. And now he's actually gone into a third command center, so wouldn't be surprised to see a couple Ebays going up pretty quickly as well. Yeah, definitely not. And let's see what exactly Soul Key is up to. He's going into speed and he has that third base now lined up. And of course, the composition that we see him use a lot is Ling Muda Bane Ling. It's one of the compositions that he used in one of the first Pro League matches where he faced Innovation and uh, well went back then. Once again, that was talked about for a long time. And he's getting his circlings out right now. He, of course, knows that this is roughly the time when we will see the first Talions on the map. And with the extra queens, the creep spread is what he has to drive for now. Indeed. Well, we actually have uh, Burrow on the way, and I really do like to see that out of Sulky. Burrow is such a useful upgrade. A lot you can do with that. Delay that third base, force him to use more mules. They're, as soon as they see Burrow once, they have to be cognizant of the fact that there can be burrowed banelings anywhere. We had at the beginning of Heart of the Swarm a couple of builds that centered around roaches with an early burrow upgrade. <laughs> yeah, those. They've kind of fallen off the grid. They don't really do that much anymore. But I really like to see this upgrade early because, as you already mentioned, just getting that block at the third is so awesome. It gives you scouting information, mm -hmm. it forces a scan, it delays everything. So it's a great tool for a Zerg player. And it's yeah. not all that expensive. It's not. You know, the extra 100 gas, I mean, that it's kind of, it can slow down things such as uh, your your melee and a, a, you know care pace upgrades, yeah. but I think it's it's a good thing to invest in pretty early if you're not really going for that super fast layer. I got pretty excited when Blizzard <coughs> said that they are toying around with the idea of making the upgrade 50-50, but unfortunately Whoa, that never no. went through. No 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 no. <laughs> oh my god! Don't even don't even tease me, Cal. I don't even want to hear that. I, I like that a lot. 100 100, at least it's a choice. 50 50, it's just like, alright, I'll cook that. And who needs Zergling speed when you can just burrow them and wait for the Hellions to run over? You, right. you just form a perfect circle and, and uh, then you put them out there. Look at that, he actually he had that timed out so well that it stopped this command center right before it yep. got there. What a fantastic move. And the thing is, that was how well timed. And look, he's got them actually spread throughout the map right now, where the, he, he's just going to watch everything that happens. He's going to see everything happening before it does. Sulky is just so good. And God, Sulky is good. He's really, really using that now. He's going into the double upgrades as is innovation, but Sulky now with a really good creep spread, and those Hellions are a little bit lost on the map. They're like, well, we would really like to kill that Zergling, but we can't see it just yet. So he keeps those at the back, and that makes sure that he can't take the oh, This is so smart. The Zerglings actually run in as he sees the Hellions leave with the other burrowed Zerglings, and he is in there at the third base, just killing off whatever he can. He's trying to take down the turret, and he actually manages to do oh. that, but a second too late. Yeah. Innovation misses the repair, but Solk is just a second too late. Ah, oh, that would have been so annoying for yeah. the turn player. About 30 lings on the way, even more now. And it, we also have a Spire and Baneling Nest coming up. 1-1 one, one is about to finish. Wow, Solki is playing so cool. I'm actually already getting my nerd chills going here. He is being really aggressive in this series now. And he is very well informed about what's going on there. And so far, Innovation doesn't have an inkling yet of what's going on. He has nothing, oh, well, not much on the map. Ah, Whoa, here we go! Oh, the perfect Oh my surround. god, that was beautifully done, and he is going to take out every single Hellion, and now he has a ton of 1-1 one -one speedlings going into this third base, and he forces a stim and runs away! Forces a oh stim Oh my god, runs tell away. me there's a better Zerg than this guy. I wish I could. But maybe but you life can. can maybe life gets back to tip-top shape. But as it is right now, Solki definitely uh, the number one here, and he's showing it. He's going into two-two. He's going to speed for the overlords to get those scouting information out. The position for innovation with those marines in the mineral line is a good one to defend against the zerglings. But just the entire momentum now in favor of Solki, who has zerglings board everywhere on this map. Now. Yeah, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. Now we do have a push coming out from innovation. Another stem that's completely worthless right there. 
Uh, really great play by Sulk. He's so on top of this. And those burrowed lings are giving him the most insane vision advantage this entire game. But at the same time, innovation with a lead in supply for a couple of seconds oh. here, getting that spot. We now have even the Marine taken out that was sent over there to take out That's, the Zergling. And you know how important that is? He actually he went over there, took out the ling, and that forced innovation to walk back. So he's slowing down the push of innovation here while his 2 2 and Baneling speed finishes, along with the mutas and his additional Macratch and his hatches fourth base. The difference that I'm seeing here between Sulky and Symbol's play is like two different worlds. It looks a little bit like Innovation's very hesitant to move out at this point because every single time he makes a move, Sulky is running in from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that Innovation really caught up on the amount of Zerklings that are borrowed on the no. map to give him vision. I agree with you completely there, Calder. Like he just, he has, it's like a map hack, man. Look at the minimap. It's just yellow everywhere. He sees just about everything going on. In fact, his mute is coming in now, but ooh, looks like Innovation's pretty ready for that. Yeah, Innovation has now the force and also the medivac support that he wants to move out there. He's trying to force the creep back, but once again, Solki is ready and he's moving in immediately. Ooh, and he actually kills off a little bit, pulls back, his 2-2 is about to finish, so anytime he buys here is really worthwhile. Four bases for the Zerg player, and he's running in with another force to the left side of the map, making sure that the third base, or that fourth base for the Terran player, can't be taken. So many Zerglings being built now, he has 2-2 two, two already, and therefore an advantage over the Terran player. Yeah, this is this is a big deal for Sulky, man. Like he has outplayed Innovation at every step of this game. A fantastic, amazing play. But Innovation's macro is really going. He's got a huge amount of supply, and this is still going to be hard to stop. Yeah. It's definitely a very strong force for innovation, but Whoa. here come those Banelings trying to move into the mineral line. The SCVs with a split gets a couple of decent hits off, but the Marines are trying to save the rest Whoa. of those circles of SCVs and barely able to do so. In the meantime, we have all these speed veins trying to run up this ramp. There's a lot of Widow Mines. Just gotta watch out. Oh my oh. god, those were good Widow Mines. And that is actually a game changer right there. Innovation may be able to snipe this hatchery. Well, we still have very even supply, but the snipe is what, exactly what Innovation is trying to pull off here. We have so many Zerglings moving in and shielding those Mutalists from the Marines. And now the Mutalists can just force this back, or at least try mm. to. But there are just too many Marauders now. You know what? He has a lot of Lings about to hatch. He may be able to just barely hold this hatchery. He really needs to, or Innovation is going to take a lead here. Sulky trying to push him back, and he has for now, but more reinforcements coming up for innovation. He's trying to snipe those medivacs, but he moves back again. That hatch is definitely going to fall, and uh. now he can't engage anymore. There are just too many Marines as reinforcements dealing with the Mutalisks, and Sulky is suddenly losing so much of the momentum that he was trying to build up. Uh, he seriously has, Calder, but is, is, are his Mutas going to take out these Marines? Oh my god, they just barely might... Do that it. is uh, not the best trade, though, even no. if he does. Well, he wants to kill the Marines so he can actually kill the Medivacs off. He is making seven more Mutas, and he'll force him to retreat at least. But he will never kill those Medivacs. Yeah. The Afterburners are there, and now the reinforcements are in position, so the Mutalists have to back off once again. Mm. He's, this, is, this is a pretty hard spot. You know, We'll see if he can perhaps kill this army off. Because if he could snipe all those Medivacs, then he's still fine. But... Yeah. As of right at this moment, Innovation has done a really great job by baiting those Banelings into the Widow Mines, and suddenly he has to be feeling pretty good about where he is. One of the big problems for Solki is that, yes, he was very aggressive, and he was dominating this for a little bit, but Innovation never folded in his macro, and he is now in a position where he has 3-3 three, three on the production tab. We are miles away from Solki getting an infestation pit, yeah. and this is just the story of Zerg versus Terran these days. The Terran player that is able to get this momentum, is able to push out, get the upgrade lead, will have a very strong weapon for a Zerg. Innovate, uh, sorry, Solki just doesn't have that bank that you would like to have in a situation no, like this. No, and you know, it, it all just went so wrong when those Widow Mines just destroyed all of his Banelings there. That's if he had been able to pull back or micro that a bit better, just somehow not be so inefficient there, he'd still have that extra. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Well, that was just out of nowhere. <laughs> that was uh, brutal. And another yeah. force of Zerglings on the left side at the fourth, taking down SCVs. But now the planetary is done and will at least be able to defend those harvesters. Really nice spot he's in. Now, we do have a drop going around along the top. And it looks like the mutas have, in fact, seen that. He does have 21 mutas right now. So not going to be any issue picking this off. Yeah, the Marines are being dropped here. But not a lot that they can do. Trying to get over to the fourth base. But the mutas will definitely take them out. The attack on the fourth or the third, whatever you want to name it, is going on, but to be quite frank, I think there's a little bit too much Terran and not enough Zerg. Oh, that's a lot of Marauders up there at the front. Really good try there, trying to get the Banelings to uh, detonate on them. They don't do so, but good microbiome innovation makes it very hard to actually attack in here. Now, that is a lot of Zerglings and Banes, but once again, Widow Mines up at the top of the ramp. And 
we have beautiful splits here by the Terran player, dodging a lot of those Banelings against the Mutalists later on. He's not really successful, but the splits against the Zerglings and Banelings alone are great. And as just highlighted by Legend, those upgrades that Innovation has on the production tab are about to be completed. Mm -hmm. And then we will have this massive upgrade lead for Innovation Soul Key still without the Infestation Pit and Hive Tech. Yeah, yeah, that there is true, but it, his Mutalist count is getting so high, it's getting scary. He's about to have like 35 Mutas or so, and now this big Muta Death Ball is going to be flying in and out of his main pretty much all game. In fact, Innovation's going to have to start putting Widow Mines everywhere. Exactly, because with this many Mutalists, Innovation, is his turrets are currently being one shot. <coughs> yeah. And that is a big, big oh, issue. Oh, oh. Oh, you almost got a lot of those medivacs. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the attempt to trap them. The Mutalists are actually in a really awkward position right now, trying to fly away there, and they will be able to pull that off. But the Terran army is very occupied now at the bottom of the map while those Banelings are trying to move into the mineral line again. You know what? Innovation really needs some mine hits on these uh, on these Mutalists. He's doing such a great job with this harassment. The mines continue to try to walk up in fine places, but Sulky's mutas are just so good right now, especially with that plus two attack finished up. You should even think about getting maybe a Thor. Not usually what you see with this composition, but with yeah. such a massive amount of mutalists, it's uh, worth thinking about. It is worth thinking about, and you know, uh, he should have a factory that has a tech lab because of drilling claws, so... Uh, it could be something you might want to pop one out of, just to have that little bit of extra splash damage. He's relying on the Widow Mines now heavily and getting a lot of those out into the game. We have the Terran player maxed out and Soul Key is just currently getting towards his 200 supply too. The bank is just much better for innovation, <laughs> but he really needs to be careful against all these Mutalists that are just roaming the map. Well, it looks like we're in a semi-base trade scenario here. He's trying to go up here and kill off the base of Soul Key, but Soul Key's going to kill his fourth in the meantime very, very easily. The the problem for Solki really is that there are so many Widow Mines now also in the main base and Innovation is just seemingly thinking that a good offense is the best defense and that's exactly what we see here. He's moving and he's just daring the Zerg player to come back with the Mutalisk and face his army. Mm. Well, we have a ton of Banelings on the way right now. He's going to have about 40 of them as well as a lot of Lings as well as his huge Mutal comp of 29 currently. And I think he's going to be able to crush this army to be honest. Well, it depends on how well he dodges those uh, those widow mines. Mm. That's Not too many with the main army, I don't think. Mm -hmm. He has a few still at the front, but yeah. we have those overseers, and uh, now he can start to one shot the widow mines even before they get their hits off. That is right. Well, he is moving back down, and Sulky is sitting on just three bases, so it is a little bit scary, but don't forget, Terran's mine out a bit quicker because of those mules, so three base versus three base this late, as weird as it is, is not 100% loss for Sulky as you would think it might be. Yeah, definitely true. The 3-3 three, three upgrade still not started for Soul Key, but those turrets, they are not going to do a thing. And once again, the Mutalus is bouncing in and bam, taking out the turrets. Yeah. Here comes the army, but immediately we will see the move into the main base. The command center actually getting really low on hit points. Yeah, at this point, this many meters is like six shots at command center, so you have to be yeah. really careful and really quick to respond to anything they do. Now, he has to be careful as well because we do have Widow Mines. Uh, it's starting to be placed around by Innovation as he realizes that the reason why Sulky is running him so ragged is this huge Mutalist pack. What Innovation could have maybe done earlier, and ah, there it is, I love it, the plating upgrade for his buildings. He could have started to build this a little bit earlier so that his turrets are better set up and then mm -hmm. maybe get three turrets or four turrets at one position. He's getting that right now, and that will help him a lot. The problem for, for Sulky really is once Innovation is safe with his bases and his defensive structures, he can just move the entire army in. The map. That is that is true. Uh, you'll have to leave a little bit of supply at home, but not all that much, and that's going to be a problem. But in the meantime, we do have Sulky finally. Ooh, oh. that's a good widow mine shot right there. And that's when you're really happy as a Zerg player that Mutalists regenerate a lot faster. Yes. Now. Otherwise, this game would be over right now. Uh, but yeah, right now he's getting his oh. ultimate scavenger through. Ooh. Oh my God, that is like Christmas come early, but he only gets two of them. Uh, well, these mutas, they're going to want to get out of here. He has to be really careful about that. If he loses this big clump, that's a, he doesn't have enough bank to really remax. Yeah, and th that is so true. And so far, the uh, building armor is not completed. Marines everywhere trying to get those hits off. This is really annoying for Innovation because every single time he has those, he has this army on the map to catch the Mutalist, Solk is just sending in another wave of ground units to take out one of the space or at least force a lift. 
Oh, the mutas flying back through the natural there. <laughs> they're, they're like Rambo mutas right now, stuck behind enemy lines. But still, they're probably going to kill all the enemies, much like Rambo again. Going after these supply depots right now. Just got to be careful. There is a widow mine behind that turret. Yeah, he takes on one of those uh, one of those mutalists, but now here comes another attack. He sends the bailings in. The marauders are trying to flank them and take them out, and actually, he's trapping them completely, but he has to still be a little bit careful. Better splits would do a lot here, but still, very good trade for innovation. Yeah, definitely. The Marauders uh, tanking so much damage there, but 3 3 and Kiteness plating all on the way. Ultra is being created, a lot of Zerglings as well. Right now, Solki just needs to buy a little bit of time. Let these upgrades finish. He's going to be a much better spot. Solki did such a great job over the oh last few God. minutes, buying himself the time that he needs to get these upgrades. Now we have the what, the army for the Zerg player there. Both of them are nearly maxed out. This could be the final battle, Atosis. It certainly could. A lot of these Banes do hit Marauders, but a uh, a lot of them run past as well. So many being taken out, but he has reduced the supply of innovation quite greatly. Amazing splits on the other hand, and those mutilists start to struggle a little bit. We have the Ultralists now moving in, and the number in Marines gets pretty low. He needs to do get more than only 22. We have 25 mutilists, and suddenly it's all those medivacs. They are horribly exposed and run down by the mutilists. Yeah, look at that. We're outrunning the mutas for now, and even though Innovation lost a lot of army there, let's not forget, he's on five base against a four base Solki that's really only mining from one. So even though Solki has this great set of tech, a huge clump of mutas and everything, Innovation is holding on strong, showing why he is the best Terran in the world. Yeah, Solki is at this point really making Innovation run circles here. If he is staying so agile with those mutalists as he was within the last 10 minutes, then he has a really good shot at taking this game. He is still bouncing in every now and then, or just one hitting one of those turrets or trying. But now the armor upgrade actually came into play and that helps the turrets a lot. Well, uh, he is starting to harass a little bit more over at this third base. He's trying to keep Innovation busy once again so his Mutalus flock can get something done. But, you know, I feel like I feel like we need another another almost tricky move from Sulky. Like, maybe burrow some Banelings, try to try to catch Innovation like that, because Innovation's supply is not dipping below 200. Yeah, Innovation has just the most impeccable macro ever. And once again, he's moving in. That fungal catches him a little bit off guard, but he immediately unloads the units. He's in a good spot here. And keep in mind that the hammer of Solki is moving across the map right now. And, uh, so uh, sorry, Innovation, Solki has to be really careful, especially with the pathing that those Ultralisks chose to move towards the base. Mm. He's going to have to fungal very well. He's going to have to dodge these mine hits as best he can and hit a lot of good transfuses. That is what is needed right now. A single Ultra goes forward a whole lot now, too. And a really good transfuses, but where are the rest of his units? This is not enough. The Mutalists are not doing anything. Only the Ultralisks were fighting there, and finally they move in. But this is just so much DPS. They were a little bit too hesitant trying to stay away from the Widow Mines. And at this point, we have this massive lead in supply for Innovation, who still has Widow Mines all across the map to work against the Mutalist. Here comes the Zerg player once again, but not enough. Oh my god, a first game fitting of Soul Key yeah. versus Innovation right there. 30 minutes of awesomeness, and Innovation takes the lead in the series. Wow. That was a pretty cool game. No, that was that was amazing. I gotta say, Soul Key, uh, he played so well. The one mistake that he made in that entire game was over committing going up that ramp above his third base where there were Widow Mines and he lost all those Banelings. That one thing allowed Innovation to kill that base and get back into the game and then take control, in fact. But Sulky even fought back and made it a game for a very long time. I, these two are just... Uh, what really too amazes good, me about Innovation is that every single time uh, Innovation, uh, sorry, Solki pressured him this much. Doesn't matter if it was only the Zerglings, if it was the Banelings on the ground, or the Mutalist. He never neglected his macro. Not once. He always got his production out there. He always hit his upgrades like perfectly. He got additional barracks up, expanded. He just... It's like he has two separate arms that just take care of macro while the other two will concentrate on the micro. Yeah, it's it's wild. He's uh he's Goro. Um, so after that game, I can't even believe it because that was like the best ZVT I've ever seen. Almost like that was better than anything else I've seen from Solki. Every little thing he did, the burrowed zerglings everywhere, the mutilous harassment, the the harassment, the, the pulling the army back and forth all over the place, the you know the timings with which you get upgrades. It's just, it, what a fantastic play. But innovation is so damn solid. It's it's madness. Like I, 
can't believe he did not die to that. You try to find holes in his defense and in his style, and you just don't find anything that you can really exploit. Soloki had such a great army on the map. When those Mutalist numbers hit 30 and he had all those, all those upgrades, he was just running circles around the Terran player, moving in, killing an add-on here, killing a couple of units over there, trying to get close to the medivacs, nearly killing a base as well. And Innovation was yeah. just looking at this and he took it, calm and collected. Lost yeah, the that's the most there, important part. Tried to trap them and so many other Terran players. I actually can't think of another Terran player that would have survived this. No, uh, I, I agree with you completely. I think he beats every other Terran in the world right there. And I think that uh, no Zerg in the world would probably even give Innovation quite a game like that so straight up in a game like that. Like, he didn't do anything cheesy at all. Like, that was yeah. just complete straight macro great play from Sulky the entire time. He's like, oh, I'm just going to play, you know, head to head. And, whoo, what a game. What a game. Next map, Star Station. Star Station, I actually don't know. Like, that map, I am very split. I have no prediction who's going to take it there. Ooh, ooh. Uh, well, based off how well Innovation played right there, I don't know, maybe maybe Innovation again. This is the map where I could see Solky take it, actually. You know, is it a travesty that these two are playing in the round of eight? <laughs> Shouldn't we just have these two be the final, basically, every time? Every single time. We should just seed them on opposite sides of the bracket in the round of eight. Don't even have them go through groups anymore. <laughs> You mean right from the beginning, just seat them? Be like, okay, yeah. guys, we know that. Why not? We already know they're going to get there. You, can't, you think someone can eliminate these guys? Not with the groups that we had for them, yeah. I guess. There's some nerd on the internet where he's like, but I'm a kid. No. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no. Bomber not, took out innovation with an O2, okay? So yeah. Bet you didn't predict that. <laughs> I, it wouldn't have happened if you did. <laughs> yes, I suppose not. All right, so... Um, I actually think that this is going to be uh, probably the map that Solki can take. It's a pretty big you map. Think so? no. You have a good distance. You uh, Solki has shown the mobility in uh, Newkirk already, mm -hmm. whereas you have this really good push distance between the two bases in Newkirk, but he still made it happen with the uh, uh, circling run bys that he had and also with the uh, Mutalist. So I could see Solki take this map. I would love to see Solki once again go for the quick burrow and try to see where Innovation is coming in from. Because the one thing I'm really worried about for him this game is holding that fourth base. Because the fourth base really pushes towards Terran. Whereas the first three are kind of in that central clustered location. The fourth base is going to be what Innovation is constantly pushing towards. And if Solki can avoid losing that, then yeah, I think he can definitely take this. Especially with that wide open area that he can start to actually attack Innovation in. This is also one of the maps where we see Innovation several times try to go for very aggressive cheese builds. So, I feel he's going to do that at least once today in the best of oh, five. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point. He could do that. He, Especially being up 1-0. Yeah, Why he did it in the past. And uh, so, we could start to see just those mind games coming into play. Who do you think, maybe, if he's to cheese here, what would you suggest? Because it's a good map for Reaper, but Proxy lev Double Eleven is normally what he does. Yeah, I feel 12. that the Proxy Double Eleven is more his style and he would be more successful with that. So, we're going to find out. I mean, we're jumping into a game number two. Uh,